exhausted, tired, overwhelmed. That's how I felt every evening as I entered my house to meet the glees and gurgles of my two-year-old. I also dreaded the glees and gurgles of a hyperactive two-year-old. So that particular day, I entered my house and I looked around suspiciously because I was met with an eerie silence. There were no glees and gurgles. He's been asleep for last two hours, informed me my mother-in-law quite apologetically. Now ask any parent, if your toddler has slept in the evening for two hours, it means a sure shot license to stay awake right through the night. So yeah, that night I lay on my bed, the toddler jumping around me in an unending loop. I pulled out my new smartphone, opened a bookmark article, and I read through this interview by a global lady leader. She mentioned in this interview how throughout her career, she was balancing between her work and her family life. How her non-challenged mother wanted her to remove her CMD hat right in the garage. And when she entered the house, she remembered that she was a daughter, a wife, a mother. Yes, I'm talking about this celebrated interview by Indira Nui. That night, as I read this interview, for the umpteenth time, I felt my battered spirits heal a little once again. That night, I also decided for myself that if ever, or rather, whenever, I will be in a position to influence anyone, I will also tell my personal stories. Because personal stories have the power to heal, they have the power to inspire, and they have the power to provide that olive branch which a person can hold and move on for one more day. And sometimes that's enough. But is that all that personal stories do? Around nine years ago, when I was working as a human resources professional, my husband was working to establish his waste management startup. And I would often accompany him to these startup funding events where he made pitch presentations seeking investments. So I remember this one particular event we went to, a premium institute in Kolkata, and we made this presentation. All the presentations were over, and we stuck around just listening to what the jury members had to say. And this particular jury member, who was also an investor, he said that when we are listening to a presentation of a startup, we are not just evaluating the idea. We are also evaluating the person making the presentation because we need to be sure that this person has it in him or her to take the idea to grow by 100x. So when you're making an elevator pitch, somehow squeeze an answer to two questions instead of one. Whether your idea is worth investing in, are you worth investing in? I realized that as a human resources professional also, I was doing the same thing. Stopped working. I was also doing the same thing. Even when I had the credentials of the person in front of me in the form of a resume, even when I was assured of the capability of the person through the achievements and accolades that she or he told me during the interview, I would not hire anybody whom I got rejected. Something's not right, something's not right, my gut would tell me. But what was not right? What was not right was I could not trust the character of the person to be fitting into my organizational culture. 
how people make decisions about us depends a lot on the personal brand that we present in front of the people and how do we present that personal brand my go to tool is to tell personal stories now last 8 years i have been working as an independent coach and i train students professionals entrepreneurs to tell their best personal stories to get admissions to their favorite universities get the best job that they want acquire a new client and what happens is when i ask them about their best stories that they want to put forth they give me a chronology of their professional life and this is a very linear and boring narrative so what is the alternative the alternative is the voice framework that i have formed through years of my experience and i will share the details with you today i'll start with c c stands for the contribution that you're trying to make towards the world it is the expertise that you bring to the table that you want to help people with but the stories of your contribution remain incomplete if they do not bring about a change in the person who is in front who's the beneficiary of your contribution so you need to back up your contribution stories with your impact stories these stories are the stories of how the beneficiary of your contribution how things changed for that person so when you garner testimonials when you get recommendations on linkedin all of those are stories of impact so most people when they gather stories of contribution and impact they feel they're done credibility established capability established we are done but then what about character that subconscious decision making criteria needs to be satisfied still and that you can do by creating some common ground the larger the common ground the higher the likeliness of the person let's say a client or a hirer to be trusting you to be liking you and taking a positive decision in your favor how do you create that common ground you create that common ground by digging into the origin of the client and your own origin so here you would like to dig into things like oh i also lived in the same city for 2 years as yours acha you went to the same college did you live in the same hostel oh i see that both of us have had a two year stint with a common employer and the conversation gets going people start liking you they are more they relate more with you but what if there is nothing in the origin which is common then you move on to answer the question which is my favorite question raised by simon senek why do you do what you do here and you tell people about what were your growing years were like what were the challenges that you faced in your childhood what were the failures that you had as a teenager how did you overcome them what flipped your switch why are you sitting here on a saturday there has to be something common in our thought processes in our values there is an organization called buffer in the silicon valley and to celebrate their completion of one year and a recent success they took their entire team of eight people to san francisco and across the dinner table the co-founders they started sharing stories of their childhood they started sharing stories of what they did at college what were the failures they faced and why they set up buffer they said that in the daily humdrum of work life we talk a lot about what we want to do for the clients how will we do it but we feel now that after we have shared a lot of us our background our team knows us better we know our team better and we are better aligned to work towards that common vision 
In the year 2018, a tech giant published a report that said that 85% of the jobs that will exist in the year 2030 do not exist today. We are already halfway through that timeline and we are seeing some merit in that published report. Then how will you keep yourself relevant in the uncertain future? Agile upskilling will remain a very important part of it. But you will need to go beyond and above. How will you do that? You will need to establish your personal brand by telling the stories of your values that guide you, your origin that shaped you, the stories of the impact that you have that changes the world, and your contribution that will always continue to define you. Around two years ago, I was in a similar seminar hall, an auditorium, and I was telling management aspirants, aspiring management professionals about they need to look into their work experience to dig out stories of contribution and impact. And there was this gentleman sitting in the third row. He stood up and he said, what if I don't want to share about my experience either in my resume or in the interview. I was like, why would you want to do that? I worked as a bartender. Now, if you are in a Western culture, this doesn't mean anything. But in a culture like ours, I could already see some eyebrows raised in the auditorium. I see some eyebrows raised here. However, I smiled. I asked him, what made you choose this job. I was going to college during the days. I had to fund my studies. So I decided to work through the nights. I worked six times a week through the nights. Okay, what did you do there? I said I was a bartender, but what did you do there? I took orders and I delivered drinks. Okay, so who were these people who you served the drinks to? Were they all nice people, sophisticated people coming to a club at night? Ma'am, you have no idea. Some of them were really obnoxious. Okay, so what did you do with these clients? How did you deal with these clients? Ma'am, I wanted to keep my job. So I followed the protocol. I took the orders and I delivered the drinks. I added an extra smile to get an extra tip from these people. Oh, so that means that in order to fund your own studies, to be self-dependent, you worked six times through the nights a week and you were in a customer-facing role, fulfilling customer orders and you cater to all the clients and customers, including the irate ones, to make sure that everything was in place. I still remember the wide smile that his face broke into. I still remember how the entire auditorium broke into a loud applause and appreciation. The next time when you're faced with a question, and you will be faced with a question several times about, tell us something about yourself, you take it as an opportunity to establish your personal brand using the voice framework. Tell the stories of your values, tell the stories of your origin, tell the stories of your impact and your contribution and see how the world needs to get to know who you are, what do you stand for and why you matter. My friends, in this sea of noise, authenticity is your beacon. Your story is your superpower. Own it and share it. And see how it transforms your personal brand 
and the world around you. Thank you.